What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 26. So we start today's episode off a bid for Lloyd Payne, AZ Alkmaar, putting in a 4.35 mil pound bid for our 18 year old centre half. Obviously 71 overall at the academy, signed a contract extension in this summer and of course as I mentioned he is an exciting prospect. Very quick centre half, decent defensive stats, 6 foot 2, low high work rate to a 4 star weak foot as well. Yeah this guy's going absolutely nowhere. I talked about it, possibly just possibly could become future captain in the series I guess we'll have to wait and see regardless I mean, I'm not against selling youth academy players if they have no potential tag whatsoever you see right on cue here our academy the three left in the youth squad right now none of those guys will have potential tags if they come out of the academy I'm not against cashing in maybe putting in a sell on clause as well but players like that with potential tags they're they're going to be incredibly crucial and vital to our success with club and country so they're of course going to go nowhere and um, still we sent our scout out to Wales for another nine months we shall see what he picks up this season obviously last season it was hilarious we could only send him out for six months because we spent all of our money on bringing in Ben Davis but hey the two players he picked up the most noteworthy two players Gavin Humphreys and Alan Bound God be pleased with that and don't forget Price our young goalkeeper as well who also shows great potential we'll see what he picks up for nine months I mentioned before as we accept this bid here for Kieran Evans yet reject this one for League One Golden Boot winner last year Isaac Davis who now shows great potential Fletico Madrid Diego Simeone only like and look at him 2.4 mil but of course we say no yeah i mentioned before when i when i send my scouts out occasionally i might look for a physically strong type of player but the vast majority of the time i'll look for anyone and i really do feel as though i, I know that it's debatable but i really do feel as though that's the best way to get better results from your youth scout. Still, for the first game of today's episode, super excited for this one. Heading to Cardiff for our first South Wales derby of this series. We'll have Cardiff, we'll have Swansea to face as well. This Cardiff City, and I was just so, so excited for this game. First South Wales derby, and again, we're a club on the rise. We made us a championship, and now our first battle, all Welsh battle of this series so far. Really looking forward to it. So, Heading into the game on the back of the 2-2 draw on the open day against QPR. If you remember in that game, I talked about how I think this season will probably concede a lot of goals, but I think we'll score a lot as well. 20 minutes in, really action-packed start with seeing a great save on the other end and then Cardiff hitting the post there as it was still 0-0. Sam Pearson also going down as well with a bit of a knock. Three minutes after restart, heading over a corner and it was still 0-0 with two minutes to go. All hands on deck in the final stages. It's on to close out the point and our first clean sheet of the season. Volx rolls it into Joe Lolly, turns Lloyd Payne, finds a bit of space. It's a great save with a near post by Price to keep the score at 0-0. So, yeah, what did I say in the QPR game? What did I say at the end of it? I think we'll score a lot of goals and I think we'll concede a lot. Following game, goal destroy. Yeah, I mean, it was typical, wasn't it? Why is it whenever I say something, the opposite happens directly afterwards? Newport County are going to get relegated. Yes, we're going to get promoted, boys. But uh, no, seriously, I don't understand why. Like, whenever I say something, the opposite seems to happen directly afterwards. Still, Pearson, a uh, four-week injury for Sam. Got an assist on the opening day against QPR. I mentioned last season, you know, he, he, he of course, only got eight goals and eight assists in League One. And as part of our front three, as Evans goes here for a very cheap deal, he was sort of like our third man option. And with 6.3 mil in the budget, I still haven't spent a penny on transfer fees at the moment i'm just wondering who should come in to this newport county team between now and the end of the trans window i mean surely i've got to buy someone right you see the uh the, the best welsh players here if i'm being honest i think the most likely two that i'll look to sign are Ethan and Padu and Dylan Levitt. The only problem is that whilst the transfer fees are definitely fees we can afford to pay, we can afford to part ways with three to five million pounds. We've got six million in the budget. You'll notice the weekly wages of those two players are incredibly high and Padu's on like 30 odd grand a week. Dylan Levitt, who of course we had on loan from the Red Devils last year, he's on £41,000 a week. And maybe if we were a side that were relegated from the Premier League and going down to the Championship, maybe we could afford those sort of salaries in the second tier. But we're a League One side. We've had back-to-back -back promotions from League Two to the Championship. This is our third season. We can't afford 41 grand a week. Those guys would have to take major pay cuts. Even half of Dylan Levitt's salary, 20 and a half grand a week. That would still make him the highest earner in this team 
by almost double. Ben Davis is their highest earner at 12 and a half grand a week. That's a crazy amount of money to pay, despite his evident talent at such a young age. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but at the moment, it's, it's a bit of a dilemma with our money. Like, we got the transfer fee to buy a couple of those players here. Again, Padu, Levitt. Um, I really want Brennan Johnson from Nottingham Forest. He's my number one target. I'm waiting and waiting and hoping that they'll bring in a new winger to the city ground, and then they'll be able to let him go. But for now, he's too valuable to the club. But even so, it's a bit of a dilemma at the moment what to do with the money because we could leave it until January maybe a good deal becomes available maybe even saved a whole lot until season four but I don't know I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens between now and the end of the summer window still second game of today's episode Carabao Cup first round Fleetwood Town the lower league side here at Rodney Pred really action-packed game as well very ironic considering I was playing on four minute halves so that barely ever happens Kem Campbell scored his first goal for the club Bound got the first of the season as well and Fleetwood leveled it right towards the end to force a penalty shootout and heading to the shootout as well I, I don't know whether you guys have, have seen me take penalties if this is the only series of mine you're watching right now then this will be the first penalty shootout of mine you've seen uh, I'm just going to be honest I mean that's a cracking penalty don't get me wrong but I'm really really bad at penalties in FIFA I think it's I think it's half technical and half mental. I mean, again, that's a brilliant penalty, isn't it? Bottom corner to prove me wrong. But I, I feel more confident saving penalties than scoring them. I saved three out of the four penalties I'd faced, and that meant after scoring two of the four, I had the chance to send us through here with Reese and make it into the second round for the spot kicks. Reese stands up to take it, and it's it's a good penalty to be fair, but it's a really good save as well. I, I, I think I miss half the penalties I take, possibly even more than that. And again, I feel reasonably confident confident when asked to save them but scoring is another matter I'm just I mean what is that like what is that like why did I hold down the L1 button I know that means chip and I chipped the ball wide it's embarrassing but again I saved the shoots out there kept us in it with Webb making the save but it's just I mean I, I can score like I can score it's just that I say yeah I probably do miss about half possibly about 60% of the penalties I'm asked to take so yeah, it's quite frustrating. And then again, I can have ice in my veins on occasion. But um, again, it's probably like a 50 to 60% success ratio. Anyway, this penalty shootout was going on and on and on. Like, seriously, I don't know how on earth this one found the back of the net from the dawn. But it somehow did. Atrocious goalkeeping. And that meant we had a chance to make it through here if Webb could provide the heroics on sudden death. It had been sudden death for so long. It was more like sudden slow death. But even so, Webb does make the save. Guesses correctly. And that would do it. I love the celebrations as well. Obviously, these are new animations uh, for the new FIFA. You see me charging out of the block looks like Usain Bolt there. Um, <laughs> it's the Carabao Cup first round. Like, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you don't want to lose any game. You want to win all of your games. But it was just, it's a bit, you know, like those shootout celebrations, I've mentioned before, you see them with like late goal celebrations. I want them to be more situation specific. And as the game goes on, I hope EA learn that's the best way for immersion and realism. Look, they look really, really cool. Don't get me wrong. But those are the sort of uh, celebrations you'd, you know, you'd liken to like if you just got through to the Champions League semi-finals, for example. Do you know what I mean? It's it's an amazing moment in a big competition against probably a, a very, very tough opponent. But in the EFL Cup first round, you know, <laughs> like seriously, it's probably not going to be celebrated quite like that. Still, for the third game of today's episode, I was so excited for this one, man. Really, really excited. Graham Potter's Brighton relegated to the championship this year and like last season when Bristol City were head and shoulders above everyone in League One I kind of feel as though that's how Brighton are going to be this season I think they're going to be the far superior side have the best possible chance of gaining promotion back to the Premier League so I know this will be tough we had the first two chances though a couple of really good chances as well Gavin Humphreys at heart of everything in the first half unfortunately we did trail with the only shot on our goal in the first half but seven minutes after the restart they were positive in the first half so I stayed brave continued to stay in attack mode looked for that leveler and as Rochecha found Pew, he knocked it back and this guy was looking the best player on the pitch at the time and he got his reward first goal in the championship for the rising star and the future of club and country Gavin Humphreys finds a bit of space goes in on Mark takes a touch and smacks it in so Newport in front it's Humphreys with a goal and I gotta be honest I, I felt I was really unlucky not to win this game as well another great save by Sanchez there kept the score at one more half an hour to go and that was how the game would finish but again a really credible result it's three draws in our opening three games Brighton are a four star team you look at their team there Mac Allister is still there Tariq Lamptey is still there Sanchez between the six that's a really good Brighton team 
and I will definitely say in this championship, they're the best team. In fact, I actually went through the team sheets to check, and they are indeed the highest rated and best team in the championship. So to get a point there against Graham Potter's side, I'm going to take that every day of the week. That's not a bad result whatsoever. So three draws to start the season off in this championship. It's been a pretty decent beginning for newly promoted Newport County. For the final game of today's episode, the Terriers away in Huddersfield. Looking forward to this one here against Huddersfield Town. Both teams starting the season off without a win. So I saw this as an opportunity to get our first. Something had to give. 37 minutes into the game. Oh, what a strike. I love this young man. He's the future of club and country. And I talked about Payne possibly becoming captain. I mean, I think this guy probably has a better chance. Gavin Humphrey stops on a dime, takes it around the current defender, and what a strike in to the top corner from Gavin. Two in two for our number 10, and Humphreys makes it 1-0 Newport County. The Welsh Maradona gives us the lead and puts us in front, and it was a game where really I've been dominating from start to finish. I mean, the far superior side had not been such a great heroics from Schofield in the Huddersfield Town goal. We would have been like two or three in and up, but still leading by one. 24 minutes to go, though, trying to hold on to so what will be a big three points in our first of the season. Lewis O'Brien gets three in the area and slots it past Price and into the back of the net. So frustrating because once again, a game where I played really, really well, just couldn't keep the clean sheet. And because of that, we can't keep hold of the three points. Final score, Huddersfield Town 1, Newport County 1. And that means to start the season off, I don't think I've ever started a campaign off like this before. Four games, no defeats. But no wins. We've had four draws in our opening four games. We've got more draws than Ikea. It's absolutely, it's like, does that work, kind of? But even so, ridiculous. I'll take it, though. I'll take it. Undefeated start to start the season off. We're proving we can compete in this division, if not pick up the wins just yet. Hopefully, that will change in the next episode. But that will end today's episode of Club and Country, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next episode of CNC featuring transfer deadline day. And I'm sure I will make a signing with that £6 million. Very soon.